And we're back on Southeast Texas Weekly. Joining me to talk, as uh, always, about politics, Jolie Shipley. Good to see you, ma'am. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you. Godfrey Leggett, Democratic uh, activist, and James Shannon with the Beaumont Examiner. Great to have you guys all here. It's a pleasure to be here, Kevin. Donald Trump, of course, the big uh, the buzz. He, in this last, the fourth major GOP uh, presidential debate, uh, was uh, characteristically uh, surprising to some in how strident he was with some of the other candidates. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, lack for charisma, does he? Well, yeah, I guess he, <laughs> he makes a good presentation, I suppose, to some people, not to me. Does, is that kind of a tough fighter for America, what America needs? No. What no. America needs is somebody that's sane and level-headed. He's obnoxious. Come on, give me a break. He's going to deport 11 million people, oh, Joe No, he's, he's not. He's, he's, what he's done is he's gotten more interest and more activity within the Republican debates, the Republican primary, than anybody else. Is and it that such that a Hillary Clinton who says the canned answer every time she dodges, she bobs, she weaves. Is it such that uh, these that politicians of that ilk are no longer accepted uh, in the White House? Well, I think you're seeing in the Republican primary, the elected politicians are the ones kind of fallen by the wayside. And those that are excelling are the ones without the political careers behind them. Let's, let's deconstruct these poll numbers. We're talking about Republican primary voters, mm -hmm. which is a small percentage of a small percentage of party activists mm -hmm. and people who have a vested interest in God knows what. With that group, <laughs> Dr. Carson, Trump, do well. Four years ago, Michelle Bachman and uh, Herman Cain did very well. When it comes down to the uh, serious time, they're nowhere to be found. Mm. Out in the real world, nobody's going to vote for them. Mm. Hey, Kevin, the circus is coming to town this Saturday, <laughs> and I'm eager to see what happens. You know, Trump has uh, kind of defecated all over the Latino community, and they're going to boycott. They'll be protesting us. Well, is it racism? There's the No Racism BMT movement uh, running through Beaumont right now, and you'll see this on cars around town. Is, is it racism to say, seal the borders? No. I think if you, if you ask, you know? you know, the family of the lady that was murdered in California by an illegal immigrant who had been detained and released and detained and released, um, no, that's not racism. That's a matter of security and safety. Well, but that was a matter of the system failing that well, lady. The border he, is supposed he, to be closed and immigration should allow and uh, for immigration, and that system has clearly failed. He should have been in jail, really. In fact, anecdotal stories like this make bad law and they, you know, distort the reality. What but you when have you have an open border, that's what you have, is they're all here. The great majority of the people, Joe Lee, that come across the border are coming here for a better life. And absolutely, the which is why we need to, which is why we need to reform immigration to allow for that. But just coming across in the dark of the night and, and however they can taxes get here, and however the, they are desperate for a better life. You know, they want to load 11 million people on trains and deport them. This was tried once before in Germany and Poland in the 1940s. Mm. Didn't work out too well. Okay, there's a difference between taking a Mexican citizen a citizen of Mexico who was born in Mexico and has citizenship in Mexico and telling them that the inn is full right now you need to go to Mexico and you need to apply through the process to be a resident of the United States I don't you do it with, I don't you do it legally that, though but if they've been living here for 20 years I'm sorry you don't rip them from their families well, and, I and think children and load them on a train and, and ship them out and you know I was a school teacher in Port Arthur to a predominantly Hispanic campus of course, we had children who were U.S. citizens and their parents were not. So all of those factors are going to have to be taken into account. You don't leave the nine-year-old here and deport the parents. That would not be advantageous either. That's but not you, what Trump says. But he you've got to go. That's you've all of them got to go. You've got to get a grip on it. And yeah. Trump's not the nominee. No, he, he's, and he won't be the nominee. He's, he's one of. Reason. But one of them will be, and at that point we'll be able to assess the plan of the Republican oh, candidate of course one will be. versus, versus yeah. Hillary's plan. As far as a general election, head-to-head uh, -head, uh, battle between Hillary Clinton, the presumptive Democratic nominee, and a Republican, would a Marco Rubio fare far better? The uh, polls don't show that. I, I think that Marco Rubio has got some sound policy ideas. I think that he's got a, a wonderful background history. He's not a career politician in that it was handed down from father to son to grandson. 
Um, so I think that he's, he brings some great attributes and skills to the table. If he becomes the candidate, I think he'd, I think anybody <coughs> would fare well against Hillary. Marco Rubio is a callow witling, and he'll come apart like a cheap suit when he's put in the crucible of real competition. And we yeah. get the Tea Party to uh, weigh in on all of this when we come back on Sally Sexes Weekly. Thank <laughs> you.